Hey everyone, Jared VK3 Bravo Lima, and um, Icon Australia were nice enough to lend me an ICR8600. So firstly, a big thank you to Marty, Jason and Scott who made it happen. Um, but, you know, I was sort of thinking to myself, what, what's, what can I do that's interesting with this radio? I mean, personally, I think any radio that can, any receiver, I should say, that can go from 10 kilohertz to 3 gigahertz is pretty impressive. Um, let alone one that's got, you know, a real-time spectrum scope. So I was sort of sitting there thinking, well, what would I want to, what's the most interesting thing that I can do that demonstrates the value of having a receiver that can go up to 3 gigahertz and having a real-time spectrum scope? And it occurred to me, maybe it'd be interesting to see what Wi-Fi sounds like and especially what Wi-Fi looks like and do a bit of a talk on, on you know, the technology behind Wi-Fi and that sort of thing. So without too much further ado, um, I'll get started. I will say you'll have to watch me tune for a little bit. Um, Wi-Fi is 20 megahertz wide. My, my receiver is on, um, my, sorry, my Wi-Fi point is on channel one, which is 24, 12 um, megahertz. Um, but because it uses a technology, and please correct me if I'm wrong, um, Wi-Fi is well and truly on the level of uh, knowledge that even a, 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 an advanced or extra class ham has. Um, because it uses a technology called direct sequence spread spectrum, um, and I was trying to get that out wrong, direct sequence spread spectrum, there we go. Um, when it's sort of polling, and that's what my Wi-Fi point is doing at the moment, it's not transferring data, it's just saying, hey, I'm here. Um, it basically jumps around that 20 megahertz back and forth um, to reduce interference and not, not clash with all the other um, Wi-Fi networks on channel one. So that's what it's doing at the moment. So we've got to, even though the radio is smack bang on what you'd see um, on Wikipedia as being channel one of a, of a Wi-Fi network on 2.4, I do have to go and hunt down where it's transmitting at any one particular in time. So that's what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to vary the, the um, span of the, um, the spectrum scope and the waterfall. And that'll give you some idea of not only what Wi-Fi sounds like, but particularly, and this is a real first, I guess, for, for this radio, what Wi-Fi looks like. Now, why is that important? Because it demonstrates the utter complexity of what Wi-Fi is. Um, basically, Wi-Fi strings together a whole um, bunch of different carriers um, over 20, up to 20 megahertz or more to transfer data at a high speed rate. So anyway, let, let's have a look and I'll, I can talk some more later. So that's what Wi-Fi sounds like if you were to tune in on a receiver. I've chosen AM because it's, I guess, the simplest of the um, demodulation methods. Oh, just knocked my camera, sorry about that. Um, and it, you know, let's face it, it wasn't made to be musical. So this is what it sounds like. Now let's, uh, let's track the, track the, um, the Wi-Fi down and have a look at it. Now, if you look closely, and I did have to adjust the reference level a bit for the scope um, on the camera, you could see that there is what looks to be a bit of noise across the, um, the, the waterfall. That's not noise, that's actually the Wi-Fi signal. So 
to illustrate that point, I'm going to vary the, um, the span of the scope, and that will basically demonstrate just how complicated and how many carriers in, are involved in Wi-Fi. Now in the end we went uh, out to about a megahertz of bandwidth on the scope um, which you know it doesn't really it shows you the bursts of activity in the bunch of singular characters but the fact is there's just not enough resolution on, on the scope to display a megahertz worth of, of carriers so I'll zoom back in to sort of what looks to be the ideal um, level So now we're displaying about 20 kilohertz worth of um, bandwidth. And it, it is quite obvious, um, you know, that the activity, you can see that it's sporadic. Um, that's because, as I said, uh, um, it's using direct sequence spread spectrum. Um, but uh, the interesting thing is that each of those characters, uh, carriers, sorry, is encoding data into what are called symbols. And the way it's doing that is by using a technology called quadrature amplitude modulation. Basically, that's a fancy way of saying it's varying the phase and the amplitude of each character over the period of one sine wave. Uh, well, over, well, over one period, I should say. Um, and so, you know, when we talk about things like um, uh, Yaesu system fusion, we call it C4FM, um, we're talking about uh, four characters, carrier four. Um, Wi-Fi isn't just using four carriers, it's using heaps and heaps and heaps. I was trying to think of the exact number, it, it eludes me, but lots and lots as you've seen on the scope. And not only is it doing that, but it's instantaneously varying the phase and the amplitude of each of these um, car uh, carriers, and then adding them all together and processing them in, in DSP to transfer a large amount of data quickly. Um, and if you think about that, it's absolutely mind boggling. Um, you know, this, te this technology wouldn't be possible without the development of Fourier transformations, uh, a level of maths that I could never get myself to. But your smartphone is doing that instantly without draining the battery over 20 megahertz worth of bandwidth. And I think that's kind of amazing. So once again, thanks to ICOM for, for lending me this radio and sort of demonstrating 
just how, and having a bit of a talk about just how complicated modern communication technology is. I think it's really awe-inspiring and, you know, we, we think of advances in amateur radio such as system fusion and digital mobile radio and, and P25 and all that sort of stuff. But compared to what, compared to internet technologies, it's, it's, it's just, it's just dipping our toes into the progress we've made over the last um, 50 years. Um, you know, things like um, quadrature amplitude modulation, orthogonal frequency division modulation, all of these things, Bell Labs started developing them in the late 60s. Um, so, you know, when you, when you go and buy that system fusion handheld and you think uh, it's modern technology, it's not. Um, <laughs> it's modern to amateurs, but um, compared to what your smartphone's doing, um, it, it, it's not much at all. So, um, yeah, thanks, Icon, for, for lending me this radio and, and demonstrating, you know, what what uh, state of the art technology, uh, communications technology is really like, like Wi Fi and that sort of thing. And um, I hope you've enjoyed my, my video. If you want to learn more about this sort of stuff, um, aside from going to university, <laughs> doing a lot of study, probably a few PhDs and postdocs and the rest, um, basically start off with uh, a good example is I, I find ADSL. Um, the first generation of uh, ADSL using discrete multitone only, only I say only, used 256 carriers. Um, and you know, it's it basically easy to understand. And once, you, once you've gotten your head around ADSL, have a start thinking about Wi-Fi and uh, you'll have a new appreciation for what your smartphone can do. Um, that's all I can say. This is Jared, VK3BL. Please stay tuned for more um, ICR 8600 videos. Um, we've got the, the mini circuits, uh, Zulu Sierra Charlie dash two dash two plus. Um, antenna splitter so we'll be doing some um, comparisons between its receiver and the IC7610 we're going to record the audio files directly to SSD card for both receivers and make them available in our um, description of our YouTube videos so you'll be able to download them have a listen to them and uh, it'll basically be like you you own the radio so um, that's a, a great way of getting to try the radio without having to go down to the toy shop and um, basically, because I, I usually, you know, um, record a net, you're guaranteed to get a mix of uh, strong and weak signals and that sort of thing. So I think, I think that's a great way of sort of evaluating a radio. So yeah, stay tuned. We, we've got this for, for a month and um, we're going to shoot some good content on it. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, I'll catch you later. 73.